What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangilli here with a little bit of a different video. Now, a lot of you guys know me from Marvel Strike Force, uh, and not Runeterra, and definitely not this game. Uh, and I uh, still play Marvel Strike Force, and I will continue to play and make content for Marvel Strike Force. But if you play Marvel Strike Force, this is a game I want to tell you about. This game is called Disney's Sorcerer's Arena. It is a new game, kind of. It is new to me. And it is a game that's been around for about a year. It's available in beta. And it, it's been through some changes. Originally, it played very similar to a South Park Phone Destroyer or a live card play game where you'll play cards onto the field and then interact with uh, a scrolling or uh, leveling style fight. But uh, it wasn't really... It was similar to Minion Masters. It wasn't what it is today. As of November of 2019, the game kind of went over a, a huge overhaul, and now it's uh, par part and parcel of a game that I have uh, that I have uh, affectionately come to call the Five E's. Five uh, V, as in Five E Five, Five E Fifteen. The game where you pick a team of five and then versus, you know, five other players or uh, waves or something like that. So I call them the 5e games. I don't want to take too long kind of talking about that. I just kind of want to go straight into the type of game this is. Now you'll see it's your standard hero collection game, not resource management game. Hero collection game where you collect characters throughout Disney uh, franchises. Uh, no, this does not include Star Wars or Marvel. This is pure Disney. And as you can see, there are about 62 characters available right this second. Um, standard issue unlocks where you farm nodes and use store currency to buy character shards. You gain gear pieces that you can use to upgrade characters. Anyone who's played Marvel Strike Force, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, you'll know the core of the drill. This game does play a little closer to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Dragon Champions, then Strike Force. Uh, but it has a little bit uh, of everything in it, especially since the rework. Now, obviously, uh, one of the things that attracted most people to Marvel Strike Force wasn't necessarily its 5e status, but it's Marvel IP. So this might not appeal to 100% of the base. Uh, some people may not care too much about Disney characters. This may appeal to huge percentage of the base and this will definitely appeal to anyone who enjoys the style of gameplay where you build teams to compete against other teams uh, just wanted to introduce you to the idea of this game kind of give you a quick rundown of, of what it does that you may be familiar with and a couple of things you may not and i'll make this video relatively quick for that you already know the standard character collection idea um I've been playing this game for about two days now. Uh, I've collected quite a bit. One thing off the bat that I will show you is that they do have cosmetics that are capable of letting your character look different. This is, they are completely cosmetic changes. This costume does not change his gameplay, nor does it change his tags, nor does it make him do something different. He just looks different, has a little bit of di like different mannerisms, and they're available for quite a few characters. Um, they seem to be available uh, through events and not necessarily through spending. Uh, but as with all time, if there's an event you may be able to spend to accelerate your progress through. I was able to get this. Um, I happened to spend, but I don't believe the fact that I was spending particularly made it like possible. I think I just did it. Uh, and that's kind of how they, they focus all of the events. In addition, they do have standard like waved events. For example, right now, the event that's going on is the Cave of Wonders Aladdin event, obviously. Uh, and this is a mechanism by which you unlock Jafar. I know you're seeing one of 80, and that may be confusing to some players. Uh, that is because character uh, unlock shards are significantly lower than Marvel Strike Force players are used to, in that a one star unlock is 10, a two star unlock is 25, 
three star is 50 total shards, not additive. Total shards. Uh, four star unlocks are 80. Five star unlocks, which uh, only exist in one form, are 145. And just to let you know, six and seven stars uh, go up slightly to the point where uh, it is 330 total character shards to complete a character. Uh, stars on characters are kind of the same way in most games. They're gates. You require a certain number of stars to accomplish a task, for example. I cannot do this fight, as I do not have these characters at 4 star. But if I can, if I get them up in the next couple of days, I should be able to. That's really what stars do. They don't necessarily increase your power that greatly. They just help uh, gate, gate you beyond characters. Uh, this game is very gear dependent. Every time you gear up, a character they get a lot gear has a lot of uh, value to it and it adds a lot to your character um, the different game modes are simple sorcerer's tournament is your standard pve ladder where you're playing other we're fighting other players uh, i will do this fight in a different video probably the next one you see so you uh, you get five a day but there's a weird feature right here called claim uh, everything in this game has the ability to be supported by your friends on your friends list and your alliance or your guild it's called clubs in this game so i can easily ask people of my alliance hey support me and they can click i support you and immediately give me another attack so every day i can have up to six attacks in alliance if i ask my six attack in arena in tournament in order to uh, uh, progress my, my tournament line club dungeon is the uh, raid equivalent of the game where you just kind of fight your way through the through the dungeon and the further you can get and you get as an alliance the uh, more rewards you receive uh, it doesn't work um, in the exact same way you will always fight through the same nodes but uh, every time someone clears a node they pick a doorway to progress through if they pick the correct doorway they can immediately progress if they don't they have to wait for someone else to find it, it strange but uh, not disappointing uh, in that you everyone can do an attack once you pick the incorrect doorway it's permanently removed you don't have to click it anymore you can keep going on so that's how the raids work in this game uh, the tower is the standard issue 5e tower game where you use uh, any team to progress up the tower uh, hopefully you can have multiple different teams so when one fails you can replace it uh, think of this as the blitz style game blitz be in marvel strike force being its own unique version of tower this is very standard issue tower you just fight all the way up until you receive you receive credits and buy something from a store very similar to blitz summoners challenge are the daily are the daily challenges you receive two a day one thing i will say is there aren't five different character uh, types there are like bio mystic there's three there's offensive characters defensive characters and support characters and all gear falls into one of those three categories so you're not necessarily picking up five unique types of gear you're picking up three unique types of gear across the line um, club conquest is the uh, alliance war version of this game except it's crazy it's 3v3 chinese checkers in which everything moves into phases right now we're all registering putting our teams down determining which teams we're going to use uh, much like Alliance War, you don't have to have full teams on defense. I only have three teams right now as I don't have many characters. Uh, I have one big defense team and two smalls. The leadership of the Alliance places the teams, and then you go into an attack phase where you kind of Chinese checkers your way around. At the end, it's the person who controls the most nodes wins. Uh, I, I'll get more information on this as I record our live war when it comes up this weekend. But as of right now, I don't have much. Um, what else am I missing? campaigns there is something called the grand campaign it has its own energy and it's the primary way that you're going to access ability materials gear and uh, shards the fun thing about this and most uh, nodes is that every single node has no limit you can farm any node as often as you want as you can see i can farm this seven times because it costs 12 if I go down to a lower one, one of these probably costs less than 12, right? Nope. Oh, eight. I could farm this one 11 times. There is no limit to the amount of times you can farm. However, it is its own separate energy. Every time you farm a node here, you get its own currency called Grand Champions Currency. 
these this currency currently is only used to buy the equivalent of basic orbs in the game that's probably going to change uh, but this is its own campaign and uh they also have really high drop rates of silly things in this campaign so it's its own campaign you gain energy and experience for using it uh, you can farm characters infinitely from this area, but the energy itself is it comes at a little bit of a cost. The next two is a Heroes and Villains campaign. They're independent, um, very similar in many games. Uh, as you progress, all of the gear farm nodes down here, you can farm them literally as many times as you want, very much like the previous. Uh, I don't have any energy, so I can't, but... You can farm them as many times as you want. If I really want this gear, I can farm them infinitely as long as I have energy. The elites are the character shards. These are limited. Three uh, for an average player. You get four if you have the VIP program, which we'll get into. Uh, but the difference between three and four is functionally nothing. You know, It's not like three or six. So the v That's not a selling point for the PIP VIP. It's just a really nice thing you get for spending any money in the game. Uh, and you progress through both of the campaigns. The only thing I haven't unlocked yet, but I've seen some other people play, is the PvP arena. This is awesome. This is a live PvP where you are fighting other people for prizes who uh, make decisions live. You're only fighting people who are currently live or bots that don't exist in the game right now. From what I've seen, sometimes they're just there's no one available to fight, so they'll put in a bot, but... Uh, you're not really ranking up or doing too well because it does matter who you fight. It's a very MMR-style uh, system. Outside of that, the store, very similar um, to like the average spender store. There are packs. This is a four-star uh, four unlocked Jafar with a decent chunk of gold and level-up potion. Level-up potion being the training material of this game. There are... Uh, Decent packs of shards. Now you see 30, 30, and 30 of each of these for $50. You say, that's weird, but you also have to remember that 30 shards of a character in this game are worth significantly more than 30 shards of a character in Marvel Strike Force, probably closer to 30 shards of a Dragon Champions or Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. It, it means more. So this is, if you really look at it, this is a two-star. This is three two-star characters for $50, but... Uh, it also comes with gold and all of the resources to improve these characters to at least a playable level, uh, at, at least at the start of the game. Whether that matters later, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But that's it. Um, And you see tiny little packages. This is an unlock of, of one character, technically an unlock of both characters, but decent chunk with cores for $20 or uh, in-game currency, diamonds. Ooh, Kronk. Every time you unlock a character, they tend to show you an offer for a little bit of how to get them stronger. And that's the pretty much the even line here. Uh, season pass I'll get into in a second. These are the daily passes. This is every four hours you get a free pack. Every day you get a free pack. And what they have in them, you know, pretty much just random small stuff. Your average like, hey, thanks for playing. This one's a little bit better. You have a pretty, you have a high chance of getting either gold or level up potions or training materials to help you train up your characters, gems, some amount of them, and then two to three uh, shards of almost every any character that's not a legendary unlock in the game. Loyalty pack every seven days you can open one of these as long as you log in, and it's ten shards of the same basic pool of characters. Ten shards being quite a bit, so every seven days you're guaranteed ten shards of something. The uh, store, very simple. You'll notice that if I spend five USD, I get more than one penny per core, uh, and it just goes up exponentially. Another little fun fact is a lot of these offers say plus club gifts. If I were to purchase this offer, every person in my alliance gets 500 gold coins. Doesn't seem like much. Doesn't matter. It's just a nice thing. And if anyone buys the $100 package, everyone in the alliance gets quite a bit more. It's not an incentive to buy. However, if I'm going to buy it, it's very nice to know that other people in my alliance are getting strong. One last feature, you could just buy gems for your friends, and I assume this store will actually grow. If someone in my alliance is like, man, I really have it, but I don't have money right now, I can just give them $20 worth of coins. Why would I do that? I don't know, because I'm a nice guy. But I can buy anyone on my friends list or anyone in my alliance coins, 
uh, which is, makes it really fun to stream this game because if you win a giveaway, I could just immediately send you in-game currency without a doubt. So a little bit fun conversation about the store. One other thing I wanted to bring up is Pass Holder. Pass Holder gives you free stuff every month. So the, the January Pass Holder was the costume for him if you were able to complete it. Uh, it's character casual shards. Think of it like a login calendar. You gain experience through quests uh, as you progress. Uh, there is a pass you can buy. Uh, think of it like Stream Captains or... Um, I'm trying to think of a comparative game that might have it. I'm having a hard time, so I'm going to stick with Stream Captains, where you get stuff for free. If you spend money, you just get more stuff for what you've already done for playing the game. Uh, and the stuff you get is pretty worth it. It's about, just looking at the numbers, 500,000. So I think it's about a mil and a half gold in game, you know, in game gold. It's got uh, quite a bit of arbitrary gear pieces, usually lined in with the character. So this is probably a piece you're going to expect to use on, well, this is Ariel. Uh, you get a handful of grand campaign coins, which again are the basic orbs of this game. So you should be able to open quite a few of them. Uh, and it, it, these offers tend to range from, I believe, nine ninety nine for the month to twenty five ninety nine uh, for purchase. Uh, and you don't ever have to make this purchase on day one. If you've progressed pretty much close to the end, like we'll say you're, you get about to level tier thirty five and you have a couple days left, you can make the purchase, and you will then be able to claim not only everything you've done, but uh, additional quests and experience that was only available had you bought the gold in the first place. So there's no downside. You can buy this offer immediately. You could buy it at the end of the month. I, like I said, I've been playing this game for two days. This has ended in six hours. I bought this pass quite literally the first day I played. Within tw less than 24 hours, I completed everything and got this cool costume, a little fun stuff. There's a lot of fun stuff in this game, less... Uh, skill base so spending will help you progress your game but it'll also give you tiny little fun stuff that you can be like hey guys look at how cool this is uh, and that's that's the pass holder line the other thing I just wanted to show you uh, that I did skip uh, but that you can spend money on that's kind of incentive is where is it Boop. the VIP package the VIP package is multi purchasable you can buy it many times if you buy either of them what you get is uh, instant cooldown on challenges, so you don't have to wait to uh, complete your daily challenges or as they come up. You get a little bit more energy on refreshes. You get twice whatever the daily login calendar claims. You get one extra node fight on um, elite and club dungeon attempts. And then you can basically auto fight more things. Uh, and you get a little bit faster game speed. So... It, you don't necessarily none of it's amazing it's just a very nice offer uh the difference between these two they give you the exact same offer is gems how many of these gems do you get a day if you buy this the day you buy it you get 500 gems and every day you get 50 if you buy this you get a thousand 150 you can imagine you could buy these multiple times i don't know why you would i'm just saying you can so if you don't want to spend 25 dollars for this but you want to spend uh, this you don't get double the benefit of the vip at this point you're basically just buying gems and getting the vip status uh, as a result so whichever one of these you like i don't necessarily think this is the highest impact one uh, but you don't need it this is just a very good offer that exists in the game to give you an income of currency outside of what you're normally getting and the last thing i want to show you was the stores uh, this is the gem store much like in all games do not ever go here there is no reason to do not spend gems on things in this game you don't need to unless you're a whale do whatever you want the gold store hold on real quick i'm just gonna buy everything in the store right now as i'm a new player oh yeah there's a one touch buy everything button for the vip it's really good especially because it takes gold for this uh and no issue in this store is the uh the raid store the the alliance store more or less you get the alliance currency and just for being an alliance this kind of stuff comes in and uh, it's, it's same thing it's character shards and you know a handful of, of gear what you spend these on so far i'm not sure but i'm pretty confident i want to uh work on characters very quickly so I, i'm assuming characters are at least unlock worthy quickly and then i'll worry about whether gear is of importance 
this being the uh, PvP store, the uh, the tournament store, every day you get your payout by whatever winds up with what you want. I'm currently working on a guy named Shan Yu, but you know, I don't know who's great yet. We're learning as we go. Uh, and this is the Blitz or Tower Defense store. This store, uh, I don't know what this is yet. I'm sure I'll find out soon. Uh, and this is the uh, seven star character store. Once you get a star, a character to seven star, this unlocks, and you can use those currencies to buy specific characters or gear or whatever. I've seen the store from other people on YouTube. Other than that, I think that's it. Uh, I want to show you one version of the gameplay because I feel like I can't just tell you what the game looks like and not do a fight for you. Uh, so I will go into a villain's campaign. And I will look at a fight that I have in three star, and I will just try to go three star it. So my team, this is all villains. You'll recognize some of them, probably not all of them. Oh, you get spells. Spells are basically like Final Fantasy summons. They, they you gain energy towards them. You may cast them. This is a giant meteor. This is a guy that snipes people, and if he kills them, he gets another turn. Uh, whole bunch of crazy spells you get them you can you level them up like characters but you can use them more frequently and my team is guys i have that i've invested in I, obviously it's very early in the game i don't have a perfect team yet but we'll just give you an idea of what this plays like now i have to be very careful because i just started this game and they have something called persistent auto fight so if i auto fought the last game auto fight was on again and it was going to progress through this i have 3x speed so let's get a quick idea this is deal. This is AOE attack hits everyone in the field and immediately evaluates all continuous damage. So if they have something that's going to tick on them, like a dot, a bleed, or a poison, uh, all of that immediately does the damage on uh, the turn he does it. This is a target opponent and adjacency attack. Right now, none of these guys are adjacent. It's a five v five. Look at like my screen versus theirs. You'll see that they don't have anybody in their back row. So there's no reason to do that. So I'm just going to punch this guy in the face. Big Bad Wolf. Uh, blows up one dude and heals equal to 30% of the damage he does. Or AoEs everybody with a 40% chance to put defense down on. Let's hit everyone. No, no, yes. This defense effect is the next attack will crit. So I don't need to waste a real attack on him. I could just punch him. And he died. Gaston is a tank. This taunts and allows everyone else to go faster. So if I do that, everyone got 10% turn meter. This is a heal. You can kind of understand the, the core of the gameplay of the game, so I'm just going to not explain any more of these moves and just kind of play through. You'll see it plays very similar to games you've probably played already. Everyone's at full health, uh, but this guy is going to get hit. No, I've stunned him, so I'm no longer worried. So adjacency will be these three characters, as we talked about before. So if I hit him, these guys were adjacent. He was the only one that was off. This is everyone, so I might as well just use it now. Let it recharge. This is the summon I mentioned before. This is uh, a vulture on a gallows shooting people in the face. Happy to have him here. And like I said before, if he kills someone, he takes an extra turn. So kill him, get an extra turn, shoot him. And this is a little bit more detailed than I think you need to see, but... Might as well tell you a little bit now while I'm doing the fight anyway. Well, I don't want to interact with her, and this hits everyone, so let's go. I will taunt. Shooty guy is doing his shooting. This is, again, another AoE that puts defense down. That was great. The last spell, like I said, Giant Meteor. Go. Now, this is a different effect you guys probably haven't seen before. This says flanking, flanking attacks rows, and since there are nobody in the row, it, you're not going to really see it, but this will attack everyone in the back or the front. Since I don't want to hit her, 
I will just attack her. I don't want her to survive, I'll attack her. And that's it. So it's, a, like I said, standard issue 5e, you versus whatever they come out. This is the very early stages of the game, so, so not the... So the fights aren't that difficult. Hopefully, uh, this appeals to you. Now, if you ask me the final question, which is, Tony, why are you even playing this game? It's, uh, I'm currently striking, I'm doing a spending strike on Marvel Strike Force, personally. Uh, I've informed my alliance that I'm personally not spending, if that makes them uncomfortable. Uh, if they want to keep spending, they're welcome to go to another alliance. However, since uh, about 40 or 50 alliances are currently not spending in Marvel Strike Force, uh, I am a whale. I am naturally a whale, and I always will be a whale. I want to spend money. What I have done in this game, I've come here. I've given them not quite, a, not as much money nearly as um, I've spent in Marvel Strike Force monthly, but I've given them a small amount of money. Uh, it has heightened my enjoyment of this game. Uh, none of the offers felt particularly heinous. And as of right now, this is a new game, so I'm not going to make any claims as to whether or not it's better or worse, but it is an option. So if you like Disney characters, and you like 5v5 strategy games, and you like Gargoyles, and you like Monterey Jack, and Zipper, and Chippendale, and you want to unlock Aladdin, and next month, or the month as you see this, uh, the Lion King uh, is the specialty event. So you want Simba, or more importantly, Kid Simba. Check the game out. I have instructions below. I will tell you this game is currently only available in Canada and New Zealand. So below, I have a link to an APK that will explain to you how to download this game. It is very difficult. Uh, I'm not offering tech support on how to, support, how to download this game, unless you check my stream out. We have plenty of people uh, in my stream that will tell you about it and how to do it. It is not as hard as it looks. Uh, it is only available for uh, Android right now. But if you are interested, pre-register if you can find it um, or you know, tell them, hey, I'm super interested. I'm on iOS. Let me play this game. So right now, if you have an, I an iPhone, you're going to have to play this on BlueStacks or buy an Android. Or if you have an Android, you could follow the instructions or the link below, and it will help you uh, install this game. It is a legitimate game by a company known Glue. Glue has made quite a few games, mobile games, for the last six or seven years. So I'm not worried about that. I wouldn't be advocating it if I was. But if you're playing Marvel Strike Force and you can't spend any money and you're like, I want to play a game like Marvel Strike Force with characters that I also like, Disney Sorcerer's Arena. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your time as always. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.